Mohawk Infectious Disease Specialist, Dr. Zane Chagla, joins us with a COVID-19 update. Thanks for joining us, doctor. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. I wanted to ask you about Health Canada has authorized a two-dose plant-based made in Canada COVID-19 vaccine. Can you explain the difference? I think a lot of us want to know the difference between a plant-based vaccine and a regular vaccine. Yeah, this is how it's manufactured. So it's a really interesting vaccine. It uses proteins to COVID-19, similar to how um, the HPV vaccine or uh, the hepatitis B vaccine works. The difference here is rather than you know being synthetically manufactured in a lab, these are manufactured in tobacco plants, and and these proteins are then harvested and then used for the vaccine. So, you know, it may. Um, you know, give us a really easy way of producing the vaccine in large quantities, but also, again, for those people that are a little bit more hesitant, um, that are a little bit more unclear about the, um, the model with mRNA vaccines, you know, the Medicago vaccine does offer an alternative, which has good efficacy, was trialed in Canada, uh, and hopefully should be on the market uh, to, to, to give to people in the next uh, month or so. Right. Do you think it's more attractive for someone who maybe is a little bit hesitant to put synthetics in their body? Is this is this an alternative then? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the, the clinical data was good. Uh, and the trial showed 80, you know eighty to ninety percent efficacy. Uh, um, you know, they they're well tolerated and safe. It's Canadian. It's Canadian manufactured, meaning our supply chains are much more reasonable. Uh, so lots of good pieces to that. And and yeah, absolutely. There were people that were hesitant to take. Uh, mRNA vaccines or viral vector-based vaccines, Novavax and Medicago vaccines will offer an alternative to those individuals so that they get the same protections from this virus as everyone else. And lots of news in the vaccine world. The federal government has also signed an agreement with AstraZeneca for a COVID-19 antibody therapy. So can you explain how that's different uh, from a COVID-19 vaccine? Absolutely. So the, this is a really interesting compound. And so rather than a vaccine where uh, um, proteins or, or genetic material to the virus is used to generate an immune response, this is essentially the immune response. So these are antibodies. And we've typically used antibody therapy here in Hamilton uh, for uh, people after they get COVID-19 to protect them from complications to kind of jumpstart their immune system. This is a little different. So this is a long-acting antibody. It sticks around for months and months and given to people kind of stays in their system. So when they get exposed uh, and get infected, these antibodies are already there to work. Um, so, you know, this is essentially kind of passively giving you an immune response. It's short acting, it's still a year or two. It's not necessarily, you know, as robust as a uh, vaccine, but there are certain people that can't make great responses to vaccines, people who have transplants, people on mm -hmm. chemotherapy, people on immune suppressing medications. Right. This is going to be a really good alternative for them to make sure that they have the same protections as everyone else. Because again, those antibodies are there. They're going to work. Their body didn't make them. And, and so again, they have that protection long term. All right. Well, thanks for that. And then uh, before we go here, can you explain the difference between Omicron BA2 and BA1? What do we need to know here? Yeah, absolutely. So these are two uh, viruses from the same family. And, and really, you know, they, they came together at the same time. We saw Omicron BA2 even in Canada right at the beginning of December. Um, they're slightly different in terms of some of the proteins that have changed. Some of the mutations are same, some are different. Uh, there's been some lab studies suggesting that it might be a bit more serious for people. It certainly is more transmissible from person to person. Mm -hmm. The good news here is that in, in human studies in South Africa, it doesn't seem to be more dangerous in, in big populations. Uh, the vaccines and having had Omicron infections seem to be protective for BA2. Uh, and so many places in the world which have seen this as a resurgence and likely in Canada will be the dominant variant in a few months. Um, you know, are, are still seeing periods of calm as it's been surging. So, right. you know, that's a good news story. It still yep. means that people do need to get vaccinated right. to, to protect themselves against BA2, but it shouldn't cause a lot more disruption. It'll be around for a while. All right. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Zane Chagla. That was very, very helpful this morning. Have a good rest of your morning. No worries. <laughs>